Welcome to AP Euro flipped class. Uh, War of Religions, Viva la French edition, or part two of this series. Uh, in the series, we're going to be looking at the time period in France from 1562 to 1598. Uh, we'll be looking at the Calvinists or Huguenots versus the Catholics uh, and the War of the Three Henrys. Uh, Henry the Third. Henry of Guise and Henry, Henry of Navarre. The uh, most important part of uh, this French War of Religions period is the French Civil War um, and how it ends with the War of the Three Henrys, um, in which you have the first Henry, Henry III, who is King of France, versus Henry, Duke of Guise, versus Henry of Navarre. Um, but before we can uh, look at how this war breaks out and where it goes, we need to travel way back and look at where we begin. When we left things at the uh, end of the Reformation, France is Catholic. You have Francis I ruling from uh, 1515 to 1547 and Henry II ruling from 1547 to 1559. Under these two, uh, you have a very powerful French monarchy. They have a permanent army um, that was given to them by their uh, parliament. Uh, they have the right to tax, and they control the church by the anointing, being having the ability to anoint bishops and archbishops uh, given to them by the power of the pope. Um, so life is good in France at this period if you are uh, a monarch. Now, this all comes to a crashing halt when Henry II dies suddenly. Um, his death is not one of mystery. He died during a jousting match. He was a man of sport, and in the celebration of the marriage of his daughter uh, in a jousting match, a splinter from a joust pierces his eye, um, and he dies from a brain hemorrhage days later. Um, and from there, France falls into chaos. Post Henry II's death, uh, France kind of starts falling into uh, utter chaos. The monarchy is starting to lose its power. Uh, Henry's sons uh, have succeeded him on the throne, uh, but they really are ruled by their mom, Catherine de, Mi de, 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 de Medici, um, who family actually comes from uh, the Italian city of Florence, uh, from the Medici family um, ruling over there. But uh, she has power and, uh, and control mainly because they're young. Um, when the youngest son takes over after the first son dies, um, 18 months after being on the throne, he is only 10. So he's looking to mom for advice, and she gladly gives it for the next 40 years. Um, during this time, we have uh, some divisions start to arise, both politically and religiously. Um, religious divisions, France is still very Catholic. Um, though Catherine is not a starch Catholic like Henry II or Francis I was, um, she's still Catholic, um, and France is still seen as a Catholic state. Um, but she tries to uh, ease some of this political division through religion um, by allowing um, and trying to give some power and shift some uh, influence to the Huguenots, who are the Calvinists uh, within Protestants within France. Um, this does not go well. They do not negotiate well. The extremes of both parties say there will be no negotiations um, and no compromise. Uh, so this then starts falling into political uh, divisions as well, where you have the nobility, who mostly were Huguenots, about 50% of all nobility were Huguenots, including the Bourbon House, uh, which are rulers in South France, including Navarre. They are important later. Um, and the towns and provinces have grown to resist the centralization of monarch power um, and are willing to join a revolt. So you have religious division, which is tied to political division, and political division, which is tied to religious division, and so it's setting up for a bloody, bloody war. All this uh, bloodshed starts on the St. Bartholomew Day's Massacre. Um, this was supposed to be a joyous occasion. It was going to be a wedding between the Valvosi's uh, family, which is Catholic, and who happened to be the monarchs in control at the time, um, and a Calvinist, or Huguenot family. 
Um, but that's not what happened. Uh, Henry of Guise had other ideas. Uh, he has a member of the Huguenot party leadership killed uh, the night before the wedding. Uh, kind of puts a downer on that wedding celebration. Um, in response, Huguenots revolt um, and riot all over the city of Paris. Um, and so Catherine, as leader of France, has to respond and put down this this huge revolt that is going on. Um, Henry of Guise convinces Catherine that the appropriate response is to massacre those Huguenots. Um, and so she does. And by October 3rd, a month and a half after this uh, massacre started on August 24th, uh, almost 30,000 Huguenots have been murdered. Um, and from there we start the War of the Three Henrys. That brings us back to the War of the Three Henrys. Um, you have Henry III, who is King of France. He is son of Catherine. Uh, Henry, Duke of Guise, who is backed by the League of Ultra Catholic, uh, or the Holy Catholic League, uh, known as both. And you have Henry of Navarre, who is a political um, party, member of the Huguenot Party, um, though he has vowed to be Catholic, but never really vows, return, follows through on that vow. So here's how this war breaks out. Henry number two, Duke of Guise. Uh, with the backing of the Ultra-Catholic League, seizes Paris, takes control of Paris. He forces Henry number one, the king, to make him his chief advisor. Now, if you're a king of France and somebody forces you to make them their, your chief advisor, you're not very happy. So, number one has number two killed. Um, and to then join forces with number three to fight off the ultra-Catholics who are rising up against number one in response to having number two killed. Confusing it yet enough? Let's go with that again. So, number two has taken control of Paris, forces number one to make him his chief advisor. Number one responds by having number two killed. Joins for number one, then joins forces with number three and they then defeat number two. Now, in all of this, number one dies. And so the only Henry you are left with is Henry of Navarre, who now is King of France. Uh, and since France is Catholic and he is Calvinist, to ease political tension, he takes a vow of Catholicism. It's purely a political move because he's still Calvinist in practice. And so we have a ending to the French Civil War uh, and with the War of the Three Henrys. But it's not really over until we have the Edict of Nantes. Um, at this, uh, through this edict, Catholicism is officially recognized as the official religion of France. But the Huguenots can practice religion in certain areas and can maintain almost 200 forts uh, for their protection. Um, and they are really given... Uh, a lot of more rights than any other Protestant uh, minority within Europe. Um, and so that is where we stand at the end of the French War of Religions.